Okay, that's it. All moved out. Now we have a completely empty bay. Got to pull the transformer out. Work on that last rack, getting that out. And we can get in here and clean these floors all up. Well, it's been a while. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I've got some footage and I'll include it next of uh, the disassembly of the CNC bay. Uh, we removed the old machine and then we uh, prepped the bay for uh, cleaning the floor up. Uh, we had a guy come in and grind all the blue paint off the floor that was peeling up, take us back down to concrete and uh, he did a grind and a light polish and then did a seal coat for us. You can see these floors are in terrible, terrible shape. This old, old urethane coating is failing miserably. Uh, it looks like at one time they used to be green, and then they painted over them blue. So, what I'm doing is I'm having this entire area ground, polished, and sealed. So we'll go back to bare concrete. got it up now. We adjusted some forks. Got it strapped down to the forks just for safety. Just trying to get this guy out of here. This one we're not too invested in. The new one has got to be done really well. It's coming out. Now the interesting part will be, can we get this thing out kind of sideways? It's definitely bigger this direction. I think he might be able to do it. He's going to have to side shift everything now. Okay, there we go. Uh, machine is out. It's been quite a bit of work leading up to that. Uh, draining the coolant trays, uh, dragging those out, get them on a pallet, uh, and then everything else that's in this shop space uh, had to come out because we're gonna we're gonna clean these floors up. That'll be the next short video. Show you progress on the floors. Um, yeah. So I couldn't shoot a lot of video on the on the removal of the of the machine because. Uh, the fellow who came out was solo. He was driving the forklift and spotting and everything all by himself, so I had to help doing that.
Today was cleanup day. Came in and power washed the walls, wiped everything down, squeegeed everything out. And we're still drying just a little bit. You can see where the machines have sat for the past 30 years. Little bit of oil stains, but uh, when the sealer goes on, should even that out a little bit. So the sealer's going on tomorrow and we should be all finished up. This was an incredibly dusty, you see the dust all over the windows, incredibly dusty operation. Just a little bit of a blend line there. Uh, down in the future, when we carry on with our plans, we'll, we'll do the rest of all of this. Just wanted to get this bay done so when the new machine gets here, uh, we don't ever have to move it again, hopefully for 20 years. Uh, then uh, I had to go on a vacation to Peru. Uh, we enjoyed ourselves. Uh, we were gone for 10 days. Uh, we did the uh, Machu Picchu, uh, went up to uh, Lake Titicaca, we did Rainbow Fall or uh, Rainbow Mountain, sorry, and we also hiked up to the uh, Humitai Lagoon, uh, it's like 16,700 feet up there. Uh, Rainbow Mountain also 16,000 plus feet. So I can throw a little video of that. Okay, the last video is from Machu Picchu. Humantai Lake was Humantai Lagoon was yesterday. That was an ass kicker. Uh, so no video from there, but uh, here's Rainbow Mountain. Uh, it's over 16,000 foot elevation. Um, pretty cool. I did find a lathe tool. So I thought I'd pick that up and share it uh, since this is kind of a machining oriented YouTube channel. So pretty cool. Lathe tool. And then when we got back, uh, I had to uh, immediately go up to the summit and do an emergency shutdown. We had a small earthquake that destroyed uh, one of our uh, bladders, basically, and a, a piston seal uh, that uh, uh, one of 24 that support the mirror. So we lost one of the supports. It affected image quality and we uh, we just had to go up and repair that thing. So we pulled the mirror out, we recoded it and uh, fixed everything and put it all back together. Uh, that was a whole week. Uh, trapped up on the summit working with those guys, really enjoyed myself. That was uh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, and then um, I had about uh, a weekend off and I went, went a couple of days and I came down with COVID. And I was 11 days uh, until I tested negative, and uh, we're good to go now. Uh, still, voice is a little messed up. I'm still hacking up a little bit of stuff here and there, but for the most part, it's uh, it's long gone. My my bout with COVID is over. Um, mm -hmm. I've said it from the start. We're all gonna get it. So I'm just grateful that I got the easy one. So. The machine, in the meantime, had been shipping uh, the new machine from San Jose from the uh, business incubator. Uh, that machine was, uh, was packaged by American Rigging uh, in San Jose. They were supposed to uh, shrink wrap it, uh, prepare it for oceanic freight. Uh, it was being shipped Pasha, which is in the belly of a ship. So there's no reason to expect it would have gotten wet in the belly of the ship. Um, uh, shipped with a whole bunch of cars and other valuable freight. Um, but we still uh, kind of insisted that it be at least uh, really well shrink wrapped. So uh, the thing shipped, uh, made the oceanic uh, travel. It's like seven days over the water. Uh, and then it sat down at the dock for like five days until 
the people who are contracted to go pick it up, which is Conan's in Hilo, Conan's uh, just decided they were too busy and they let it sit down at the dock for five days in Hilo where it rains like hell every single day. So they were supposed to deliver this thing right away and they just uh, they were just too busy. So it sat for another two weeks in Hilo um, and showed up in the condition that you'll see in this video. Cool trays. The water and rust. Well, there it is. We got it off the pallet and uh, moved it in. I couldn't video any of that because I had to help. Uh, they sent one guy out here to uh, do the entire project. And sadly, It looks like American Rigging in San Jose uh, failed to wrap this thing in any meaningful way. And uh, we had discussed that a good shrink wrap would be just fine. Uh, but there was no shrink wrap on it. So it made the trip in the belly of a ship, Pasha. Uh, so no way it would have been water damaged there. And then when it arrived, they allowed it to sit on the dock for five days before they went and moved it. And this is Hilo. It rains constantly in Hilo. So, uh, it looks like, it looks like hell. This was brand new. When Everything looked like this when I went to see it in San Jose. And now it looks like that. So, uh, no kudos for American rigging and also the local freight forwarder uh, Conan's failed miserably, miserably by keeping it out in their yard. So you can see the, the rust down here. This machine was brand new when it shipped from San Jose. So here's another bummer, the screen let me get out of the way so you can see right here that wasn't on there when I went to inspect it and that's kind of a bummer too because you know these touch screens none of them last and there is no way to replace it once it's broken so I thought you know having a brand new touch screen would have been cool we'll see maybe it'll still work but uh, kind of a bummer that got scratched now they did, uh, you know, they probably didn't know what to look for, where to find it, but uh, they did block the spindle up, which is pretty cool. And uh, did manage to break off the Renishaw, which is not so cool. But it looks like we're going to take all of the way covers out and navel jelly them and get them get them rust free again i mean who whoever has seen this in the last couple of decades i mean these things are brand new they were anyways brand new everything looked like this and those guys just let it sit out in the rain this is a brand new machine it's never cut a chip It's like a museum piece. Except for the rust. 
and uh, like I said, we'll work we'll work at this. The pendant. Look at that button, brand new. Pendant's brand new. Everything's brand new. It's still got the extra fitting that it was shipped with. There's some new rust on the machine. Thank you, Conan's and American Rigging in San Jose. Looks like they detached the cable track for height reasons. That's fine, we just have to pop that back together and undo that uh, nylon tie strap. Still has the manual for the spindle lube, which is the original Dropsa. I mean, the spindle lube is still full. That stuff's probably 23 years old. And electrically, I could not look at this when it was in San Jose because they had it up against a pallet rack. But here's what we got. Uh, my machine out, my old machine, had some sort of a cover. Every one I've ever seen had a cover over it that click, click, and it opens up. Uh, well, it opens this way. Um, so there's a, a two-level thing up here. Uh, this is a little bit different, this one. And... Oh yeah, there's the Renishaw probe interface. And we've got Vickers drives in this one. My other machines got Call Morgan, which were incredibly temperamental. I don't know if these are better or not. But they're brand new. Doesn't appear to be any water damage whatsoever inside the cabinet, so that's good. Here's the transformer. No get wet. <laughs> yeah. So even the transformer, which was thrown up in some pallet racks and whatnot, this thing is, is like brand new. So the goal now is to just get some power run to this thing and we'll figure out if uh, it will fire up or not. Uh, very likely the PC that's in the control cabinet back there, uh, the motherboard batteries are probably dead. Uh, after 23 years of just sitting and having no power put to it. Um, if, that's the f if that's the case, then very likely we'll have to remove the motherboard and send them off to a company called Fives uh, to have the batteries replaced and have the BIOS reflash. So that's why uh, my first step is to really get some power to put to it and see where we're at with that whole program. If it'll fire up, uh, I can replace the batteries here. Uh, we've done it before. We, we uh, have power supply. We just jump her some power across and delicately change the batteries while it's under power from a power supply. That way we don't risk losing the BIOS settings. Um, but that's the next step in the, in the museum piece in the brand new 23 year old uh, Cincinnati Aero 500. Yeah, we'll keep you posted.